The subject of artificial intelligence, AI, is extensive. There are single courses dedicated to the subject, and nearly every aspect of technology considers an AI. Even in an ethics course like ours, we can take an entire semester to look solely at AI in all the digital media. For this lecture, I plan to introduce you to a few key terms and ideas around artificial intelligence, and then encourage you to explore more in the areas of your personal interest. There are many misconceptions, fears, and conflicting ideas around AI. I think we can partly thank Hollywood for some of this, especially the fears. Artificial intelligence in the movies and in science fiction go way back. It makes for entertaining and scary stories to use computers without human faces as the bad guys. Think about it and you'll likely be able to come up with a movie, a television show, or a novel where the machines turned on the humans. While that's entertainment, much of it is just that and pure science fiction. But we're in an ethics course here and while we might use the movies and science fiction as warnings of what could happen if we don't consider ethics, we'll better serve ourselves if we focus our attention on what we know and what are the effects of AI in today's world and the short-term future. That said, let me give you a couple of key concepts and terms people often mix or confuse and lump into a general category of artificial intelligence. In Architects of Intelligence, The Truth About AI from the People Building It, author Martin Ford introduces us to the area of AI. Ford writes, Artificial intelligence is rapidly transitioning from the realm of science fiction to the reality of our daily lives. Our devices understand what we say, speak to us, and translate between languages with ever-increasing fluency. AI-powered visual recognition algorithms are outperforming people and beginning to find applications in everything from self-driving cars to systems that diagnose cancer and medical images. Major media organizations increasingly rely on automated journalism to turn raw data into coherent news stories that are virtually indistinguishable from those written by human journalists. The list goes on and on, and it is becoming evident that AI is poised to become one of the most important forces shaping our world. Unlike more specialized innovations, artificial intelligence is becoming a true general purpose technology. In other words, it is evolving into a utility, not unlike electricity. That is likely to ultimately scale across every industry, every sector of our economy, and nearly every aspect of science, society, and culture. As Ford describes, AI is everywhere and is now part of our reality. What do you think when you hear the term AI? Some people think AI is robots and machines, and they might be right. I suggest the AI part of robots and machines is the idea that the machine can take some actions based on multiple variables. We often think this type of AI of as machine learning. Ford describes machine learning as the branch of AI that involves creating algorithms that can learn from data. Another way to put this is that machine learning algorithms are computer programs that essentially program themselves by looking at information. Ford says that the machine learning that gets all the press is deep learning. Deep learning is a type of machine learning that uses deep, or many layered, artificial neural networks, software that roughly emulates the way neurons operate in the brain. Okay, did that last definition just take you off track? If so, sorry. Here's another way to think about these types of AI. Systems programmed to emulate a human expert are called expert systems. They pour lots of data into the network and the algorithms work through the vast data based on human expert knowledge. Say for example, an expert system such as Big Blue, the IBM system used to win Jeopardy. Big Blue used expert knowledge of humans and worked at extremely high speeds to find the answers through massive databases like Wikipedia. That system is in a form of AI, but it is not deep learning. 
Deep learning involves several layers of networks that know little to nothing about the layers above or below it. And rather than a human presenting the exact rules and answers, the machine learns to determine for itself. How does the machine learn? Martin Ford tells us that machines learn in a couple ways. Supervised learning involves providing carefully structured training data that has been categorized or labeled to a learning algorithm. For example, you could teach a deep learning system to recognize a dog in photographs by feeding it many thousands or even millions of images containing a dog. Each of these would be labeled dog. You would also need to provide a huge number of images without a dog, labeled no dog. Once the system has been trained, you can then input entirely new photographs and, one, and the system will tell you either dog or no dog. And it might well be able to do this with a proficiency that exceeds that of a typical human being. This form of machine learning is the most popular type in use today. A couple other approaches include reinforcement learning, where learning through practice or trial and error, rather than training an algorithm by providing the correct labeled outcome, the learning system is set loose to find a solution for itself. And if it succeeds, it is given a reward. And unsupervised learning is another approach. Unsupervised learning means teaching machines to learn directly from unstructured data coming from their environments. This is how human beings learn. Young children, for example, learn languages primarily by listening to their parents. Supervised learning and reinforcement learning also play a role, but the human brain has an astounding ability to learn simply by observation and unsupervised interaction with the environment. Most of all technology today is using a form of AI described above. And as Ford points out, supervised learning is the most common approach used today. What the movies often portray and what seems to get a significant amount of press is artificial general intelligence. Martin Ford tells us artificial general intelligence, AGI, refers to a true thinking machine. AGI is typically considered to be more or less synonymous with the terms human level AI or strong AI. If you see or hear the term super intelligence, know that it refers to a machine that exceeds the general intellectual capability of any human being. There are not any of these authentic forms of AGI or super AGI, but we can consider them some years away. Okay, there are some terms we use and see get loosely mixed when the subject of AI occurs. For our digital media ethics course, I'd ask you to consider focusing your attentions on learning where algorithms learn from data. Looking at AI from that perspective will help us focus on what's happening today with digital media. These other forms of AI will be important to consider as we look at ethics into the future.